I'm in my closet because I just finished packing up my luggage full of sewing makes because I'm going out of town. I'm going to be gone for about a week and our plane leaves tonight at around 10 p.m. So I was in here trying to figure out what I want to wear on the airplane. And at first I picked out a knit bodysuit and a knit jacket. But then I scratched that idea and I was looking around. And then this shirt kind of stuck out to me. This is a new look shirt that I made years ago. And I was like, you know what? I really like this shirt. I never wear it, rarely, hardly ever wear it. So I was like, mm, okay, I guess I could wear it on the plane. You know, like why not? So that's why I threw this shirt on and it's gingham and I really love gingham. And my plan is to wear it with this blazer. This is a blazer that I picked up from the thrift store also a couple of years ago. And then, I don't know if you all remember this sweatshirt. This sweatshirt has been through the motions. So at first it was a dress and then I cut it off and I turned it into a top. I didn't like the length of the top after I cut it off. I thought I did, and then as I was wearing it, I was like, I don't like this length, it's a little too long for me. So I decided to just hack it. I just cut straight across. I think I was frustrated with it, and I was like, forget it. So I just cut the band off, and now it's a little cropped, but I like it. And I didn't even worry about finishing it or anything. So I use this sweatshirt to just throw on to wear around the house or to just, you know, wear out if I'm making a quick run. And I like the little ends, even though they're not finished, I kind of like that look. So anyway, I'm going to throw this in my bag on the airplane. So I'll have this just in case I get cold, you know, I can put this on. And then when I'm on the airplane, I always feel like my feet get a little chilly. So I am taking these fuzzy socks that I got for Christmas. And I'm also going to throw these in the bag with the sweatshirt and be on my way. first thing I thought was I'm freezing it is so cold on here I'm actually really tired it's after 10 o'clock and I am beat I am just out taking a walk in the neighborhood so let me tell you after I had breakfast after arriving in town I was so tired from traveling through the night that I slept for several hours and then I got up and I got dressed and I went to a party that my husband and I had been invited to so we had so much fun I threw on one of my favorite McCall's dresses and here I am standing in line to get something to eat and something that I haven't seen in a long time is a game of musical chairs. So they had musical chairs going on and people were dancing. They were giving out really nice gifts to people who won games and it was just a whole lot of fun. So I really enjoyed it and I was so happy that I was able to wear one of my new makes which is the McCall's dress. I just woke up. I'm wearing a sweatshirt that I made years ago. I think it's a McCall sweatshirt. I just came over here and opened up the blinds to look outside. There's the neighborhood and a little pond or a little bit of water over there. So I am about to get ready to eat a little breakfast. I went last night and got some pineapple from Kroger. 
and this is gonna be my breakfast I was supposed to eat it or my plan was to eat it last night but I ended up getting some McDonald's french fries and then I didn't even want the pineapple so I was like okay that's perfect I'll just eat it in the morning for breakfast so before I came here for this trip I put on a sewing make one of my favorite dresses to wear it's a McCall's dress and I decided I wanted to go ahead and get a pedicure so I walked into the nail salon and the lady at the cash register in the front, you know, she was checking me in and she, you know, asked me what I was there for. And I told her I wanted to get a pedicure. And then she said, I like your dress. And I was like, oh, thank you. So she looks around the salon and she finds someone that had an open spot. And so she kind of, you know, steered me in that direction. So I went, I sat down in the chair the lady greeted me she was so nice so I sat down and I'm getting all comfortable getting relaxed you know getting ready to prepare for my pedicure and so I pulled out my cell phone you know so that I can surf while she's working on my feet and so then the lady at the front who checked me in she comes over now mind you I had a pillow on my lap so she comes over and I had my phone in my hand and she's like, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about your dress. And so I leaned forward because I was getting excited because, you know, I made my dress. So I was like, "Ooh, OK, let's chat, you know, so I leaned forward a little bit with my phone in my hand and I don't know what happened, but I guess I bumped into my phone. My phone slipped out of my hands past the pillow down between my feet and into the tub of water that my feet were in so i was like oh my god oh my god so i jumped up out of the chair i grabbed my phone and then the lady that was trying to ask me about my dress she was so nice she jumped in like a superhero she took my phone out of my hand and immediately started drying it off and then she handed me my phone back and then we tried to pick up our conversation so of course I was a little bit distracted because I was looking at my phone and trying to make sure that it was okay. But what she was saying is she was asking me where I got it. She was saying she liked the color and she liked the fabric. So we were chatting about the dress. So I thought that that was really nice. And I told her I made it and everything. And so then she left, she walked away and then the lady finished my pedicure. So once the pedicure was over, I shared the pattern with the one lady who was working on my feet. I shared the pattern with her and she was really excited and she said she was going to share it with the lady that was at the front at the time. So anyway, but when I got in the car, I plugged my phone in and it gave me a message saying that there was some type of water. It said something like water detected that the phone needed to dry before I could use it. So I was like, okay, these phones are really smart. So I waited, the phone dried and the phone was okay. Yes. Yeah, so anyway, I was just really happy that I was able to talk about the pattern and share the pattern and maybe someone else can, you know, get into sewing if they're not already or they can find someone to make the garment for them. But yeah, I thought that that was an experience. And after I got the pedicure, I decided, huh, this would be a perfect time to maybe get some sandals. So I decided to stop by Nordstrom. are the sandals that I picked up let me see who they're by open edit I never heard of that brand 
and I've worn them. I really like them. I actually wore them to the party the other day with the dress that I had on. So this is how they look. I just really like them. The wedge is kind of high so I can't walk fast or anything like that. I really have to take my time when I'm walking so I won't fall and maybe it'll just take some getting used to but I really like these and the fact that they're neutral they will go with a lot of things. So I spent a little time in my sewing room before making this trip and let me share with you what I was doing in there. So I have been reading through the directions for this pattern which is Berta 6084 and I bought this because I was really interested in this view here which is view what is it it's view B the longer skirt however when I looked at this pattern a little bit closer I realized that all of the views are actually the same skirt but just in different lengths so I measured let's see this view A goes 23 inches down and I realized that 23 inches will be just fine for me. I think it should come a little bit below my knee which should give me this look here that I'm going for. This one may be a little bit too long on me so I think I'm going to go with the length here for view A. There are only three pattern pieces and like I said before this is rated, I said this in a different video, this is rated as super super easy. Not super super but super easy. So you do have three pattern pieces. There is a skirt front, a skirt back, and also a waistband. The fabric that I'm planning to use is like this tweed. It's so pretty. It has different little specks of color in it. And I should have plenty. I marked on here that this is one and five eighths worth of fabric. I purchased the fabric from LA Finch Fabrics a while ago and I've been holding on to it but I'm going to go ahead and use it for this skirt and I think it should work out just fine. So the skirt will have darts in the back, pleats in the front and then it's calling for two snaps in the front to keep the skirt closed. So my plan for now is to you know maybe cut out the pattern but I'm not going to actually sew anything because not only am I you know preparing to go out of town but I also took my machine in to get it maintained. It really needed to be cleaned and all that good stuff. So they told me it would take like three to four weeks and I hope that they overestimated. it. But yes they said three to four weeks before I should have it back. So I'm just going to, you know, maybe cut this out and then when I come back from out of town, hopefully I can pick up my machine and get started on this skirt and then I'll have a skirt to share with you. So in the meanwhile, let's get back to being out of town. At the time that I cut the skirt out, my plan was to just cut it out and then make the skirt when I returned from the trip. But I had more time on my hands than I thought and I actually was able to start the skirt and finish it and I ended up just pulling out my backup machine to get it all done. This is the waistband and I decided that I wanted to widen my waistband. I thought this was a little kind of narrow because you fold it in half and then that's going to be the width of the waistband. So I lengthened this by one and five eighths of an inch. I also found some faux leather that I had, some scraps that were in my sewing room, and I just decided to use the faux leather for the waistband. And I think it will match up pretty well, pretty nicely with the skirt. So that is my plan for the waistband, is for it to be this faux leather look. So this is the back of the skirt, and I have the darts put in. So that is how the darts are looking so far. And then the front of the skirt has the pleat. So this is the pleat. And then this is the other side with the pleat in it. And also the front is interfaced, a portion of the front. And this is going to be the facing. So that's that one side and then the other side looks like this. And the waistband is also interfaced. I use little pieces of interfacing and just kind of lay them on top of one another and then press them down. So that's why you see these little areas that look a little different. I just cut off strips and fit them in where I can. I have the side seam sewn so the front is attached to the back. I am at the point where it's time to put on the waistband. And I looked through my stash and I had some of this piping and I think that I'm going to put some piping around the waistband so that there will be this black 
line in between the skirt and the waistband. So I'm just going to go ahead and line the edge of the piping up to the edge of the skirt and I'm going to baste it on first and then I will go ahead and put the waistband on top and then I'm going to put on a zipper foot and then I'm going to sew the waistband over the piping and then when, once it's flipped out you should be able to see the black piping on the top of the skirt between the waistband and the skirt. So this is the zipper foot that I'm using and I'm using it to get really really close to the piping so I can feel the little rounded edge of the piping here and I'm just making sure that the needle is really really close to that piping area. Okay so this is how it is looking so far and now I just need to fold the waistband over, sew it together, and then the waistband will be done. The final stitches for the faux leather waistband were done by hand and as a result the stitches were really loose and the waistband was moving and shifting when I would wear it. I decided to just take that waistband off and put on a new waistband in the same fabric as the skirt and this time I didn't make any adjustments to the pattern piece. So as it turns out, I bought the pattern for view B, the longer view. I ended up shortening the pattern to view A before I even sewed the garment up. After the pattern was all made up, the skirt was a little too long for my liking and so I ended up cutting off several inches from the bottom and I ended up in the end with what ultimately would have been probably the same length as view C. So I went from B to A to C. <laughs> But I do like the results and I learned if I ever make this again that I'll just make the shorter view. Other news, I did get a call that my sewing machine is ready. I am so excited because it didn't take nearly as long as they said it would. So in my next video, I'll give you some details on what they did to the machine and how much it costs. And then of course I'll have a sewing make for you. Take me out.